Good morning and welcome to UUCLB. I'm Will Gagne. Today is UU The Vote Sunday. The best way I could think of beginning is to simply say that I'm passionate about getting out the vote. For each election cycle, my mantra has always been, the candidate or the issue that I support is not going to lose because I didn't do my part. In this election, I worked for Vote Forward, writing letters to infrequent voters in Texas. I also participated in the UUCLB ICO sponsored forum on propositions and plan to work for the Yes on Prop 15 campaign, as well as phone banking and texting voters in battleground states. If you use do not fulfill our fifth principle, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregation and in society at large, a group with opposing values will fill our void and make decisions that we may oppose. Therefore, I urge you to do what you can to you, you the vote in these waning days of the 2020 election. As an aside, any ballots in LA County received on October 20th will be uh, counted in the initial returns on November 3rd. So make a plan and get your vote in early. Thank you for doing your part to you, you the vote. I hope you'll encourage others to do the same. If you are looking for a place to put your UU vote in action, Pico, California is sponsoring a Faith Votes for Love and Justice. They will be campaigning for yes on 15 and no on Proposition 20. It will be on October 19th from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Or join UU The Vote on Fridays, October 23rd and 30th. Thank you very much.
as we light this chalice today. Let us not be fooled by the smallness of the flame. There is heat to the small flame that burns and stings like our movements for justice. Through this small flame, we hear the roar of our black indigenous and ancestors of color. Yet, when we are not responsible keepers of this flame, places sacred to us and loved ones can be harmed. There is warmth to this flame that roots us in our community through all seasons. Let us remember that as we light this flame, may it not light just the flame of truth within our hearts, but may it light that prophetic fire that moves us to bold action this season and beyond. May it be so. Now is the time for worship. When skies turn orange and apocalyptic red, now is the time for worship. When children and adults are in cages, now is the time for worship. When uprisings demand our action and justice is needed, now is the time for worship. Time to take care of our souls and our healing and community. Now is the time for worship. Let us mobilize our spirits. Now is the time for worship. Bring your prophetic grief. Bring your holy rage as we move into this sacred hour. Now is the time for worship. Let the bells toll from steeples and the calls to prayer echo from minarets. Now is the time for worship. Let us gather, friends. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. As a song leader, one of the songs that I keep returning to, particularly in these days of uprising and reckoning, is Ella's song, written by Dr. Bernice Johnson Regan and performed by Sweet Honey and the Rock. Its lyrics, which I know some of you are already very familiar with, set to music the words of Ella Baker, an organizer, activist, leader, teacher, a prophet in the civil rights movement. Until the killing of black men, black mother's sons, becomes as important to the rest of the country as the killing of a white mother's son, we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it happens. Ella Baker's words in this song are ones she wrote over 50 years ago, but they could have been written yesterday. And I'll be honest, that reality breaks my heart. It leaves me crying out. Will it ever end? For some of us, that question is one that has literal life and death implications that the rest of us cannot fully know. And as much as Ella Baker's words break my heart, they also charge my spirit. Their relevance to today's manifestation of resistance and community reminds me that we are a continuation of something much bigger, much more powerful, much more incredible than this single moment in our history. Our struggles to affirm the humanity and basic rights of black and brown lives in this country and world, they did not begin with us and they will not end with us. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Now, I admit it took me several years of singing these words to realize that Ella Baker probably wasn't telling me, run with the Aunt Mustafa Taha Mami, personally to never rest. No, in fact, none of us as individuals should be asked or expected to never rest. But all of us who believe in freedom as a collective, as a community, we cannot rest. 
Ella's song, Ella's words are a charge for all of us together as a movement to never rest. We cannot stop fighting, we cannot stop creating, we cannot rest until freedom in its truest and most universal form exists in our world. Our faith as Unitarian Universalists who don't all agree on what happens after this life can all believe that what happens in this life matters so deeply that we have been called heretics, broken unjust laws, and probably gotten ourselves on more than one government list to make it known that we will not rest until freedom for every last one of us comes. And to be that unceasing, everlasting, perseverant, irritatingly prophetic movement that never rests, we need to reaffirm, deepen, and re-reaffirm our connections to each other as Unitarian Universalists. To remember that if we do this work together, we can not rest. And just as important, to be a true continuation of that much bigger, much more powerful, much more incredible freedom movement, we not only need to sustain our relationships within our faith, but we must build and sustain the relationships with communities and frontline liberators who have been leading the way to universal freedom for generations. We who believe in freedom cannot rest and can not rest when we act as a truly interdependent collective. When we are carrying our load on the way to liberation, remembering that we are part of a movement reminds us that we are not carrying that load alone. Like a choir whose singers stagger their breathing to make sure a single note remains an unbroken sound, or a hospital that runs nonstop with a rotating staff, like migrating geese who take turns leading, following, or resting in their flying formation, we cannot rest and we can not rest until freedom comes if we sustain our connections to one another. We need each other so that when we as individuals do rest, we know our movement towards universal freedom carries on, waiting for us to return and temporarily relieve another of their liberation load. As we count down the days to election day, we know that no matter the outcomes, our work will continue. We will not rest. We can not rest. If we take care of each other and our shared vision for universal freedom, that is possible. Knowing that each and every one of us is doing the same for all of us. And knowing that our collaboration in this moment is a continuation of a movement that knows there will come a day when we, all of us who believe in freedom, can finally rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes.
spirit of life, sources of all that ever was and can be. We are guided by all that is sacred within our own hearts and minds to pray this prayer and to live this prayer. We offer up this simple and profound hope that we may be light, give light, and receive light in all the places we call home and in this sacred space that reaches across miles and experiences. That we may be love, give love, and receive love out in the world. May we never forget the impact and power of our voices. May we never lose sight of the songs in our hearts. D. Blanchard reminds us that they can be heard as songs of love or of longing, songs of encouragement or of comfort, songs of struggle or of security and care. But most of all, they are the songs of life, giving testimony to what has been, giving praise for all we are given, giving hope for all we strive for, and giving voice to the great mystery that carries each of us in and out of this world. Today, we hear those songs in all the ways we are learning and growing as communities of faith, hope, and love. We hear them as, as little ones become young ones. We hear them as loved ones pass from this life and into the unknown. And we hear them in the streets and at our polling places as people of faith and conscience pave the way for a better world, a better understanding, deeper care and accountability. And we hear them in the silences, a deep awareness that there are those among us as yet unheard and unaccounted for. May we never, ever forget the impact and the power of our voices. May we never, ever lose sight of the songs in our hearts. May grace and mercy follow us wherever we may go, whatever we, may, we feel called to and toward in the days and weeks ahead. Amen. Ashe. And blessed be. Good morning. My name is Reverend Lissa, and I am here with you in Wilder Hall, where Francisco and Ronan and I are sharing worship with you today, safely, of course, as we get out the vote this Sunday with our wonderful UUA Get Out the Vote, UU the Vote service. This is our time for our own community to share the joys and sorrows that are on our hearts this morning. And so wherever you are, I invite you simply to take a breath, to reflect on those beautiful words that Reverend Michael shared with us, and to tune into the prayers of your own heart. What is weighing on you? What is light? What do you wish to share with this beloved community? Let us take a few minutes simply for that silent reflection as we listen to more beautiful music from Ronan and Francisco. And please enter into the chat 
the joys and the sorrows that you wish to share with our community and I will lift them up in spoken word and hold those silently that we hold as well. Let us now go into our time to reflect, listening to Imagine by John Lennon, offered by Francisco and Ronan. In all of the major religious traditions, people have marked time in seasons. The Jewish High Holy Days, the Muslim period of Ramadan, earth-based celebrations of solstice and equinox. Each of these seasons, in its own right and in its own way, helps humans to mark the passage of time, to reconnect with what is good and holy and true in each of us and in one another, to travel the spectrum of human emotion and experience, as our ancestors and their ancestors have done for generations. And then there's the rest of the year, the daily turn of the earth, the routines of everyday living. In the Christian tradition, these periods between the major liturgical seasons are known as ordinary time, the weeks when people carry on with the regular duties and rituals of work and family. 
the wise ones knew that there is a deep importance to this rhythm, that we need both the routine and the normalcy of ordinary time and the temporary suspension of routine and normalcy that the liturgical seasons bring. But what happens when that cycle is upended, when ordinary time is disrupted, maybe permanently, when every day is a constant barrage of hurricanes and wildflowers, of police killings and uprisings, of viruses and climate catastrophe, of repression and resistance. These are no ordinary times, beloveds. But our yearning persists, perhaps not for ordinary time with all the ways the status quo is brutal to so many among us, but for extraordinary time, a time when hope is plentiful, when justice is pervasive, when community is resilient, and when love governs us all. Our Unitarian Universalist faith compels us to be builders of extraordinary time, even in the midst of profoundly abnormal ones. Our faith compels us to claim our agency and take action, even as our broken systems strain to keep us passive to affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every single one of our human siblings by refusing to accept brutality and repression, to lean in to our radical interdependence by working together, organizing our communities to be powerful and prophetic in the face of all the forces that would dehumanize and kill us. Right now, UU The Vote is working ceaselessly to build this kind of extraordinary time. Across the country, hundreds of our congregations are mobilizing volunteers in deep partnership with local and national partners. UUs have reached out to hundreds of thousands of voters with texts and postcards and calls on track for a million before November. We have had deep conversations about the issues that are central to our deepest values. We are fighting voter suppression, mobilizing those who have been disenfranchised, registering neighbors who've never had the chance to make their voices heard. And we are also building power and resources and connections to face together whatever comes after November 3rd. So today, we are asking you to join with us in building this extraordinary time that we are all yearning for. And to mark this threshold year of 2020, and all the possibility and peril it represents. We are inviting every single Unitarian Universalist to help us move into the future, toward extraordinary time in November and beyond, by making a gift to UU The Vote. And since numbers are significant, we want to encourage you to consider a gift that honors the number 2020. Perhaps you are someone who could make a gift of $2,020, an amount that would fund 50,000 calls to voters in critical states. If this is you, now is the time for your generosity. Or maybe you're someone who could give $202 or $20.20 or some multiple of those numbers. Helping us pay for fellowships and organizers and staff across the country who are coordinating our phone banks working with state advocacy networks, building infrastructure of volunteers that's going to last us far beyond this election. Or maybe you, like so many among us, are suffering financially during this time, but maybe your gift of $2.02 can be a symbolic gesture that we are all one, that we are working together to build this extraordinary time. Together, friends, as Unitarian Universalists, we are doing extraordinary things in these abnormal and heartbreaking times. And there is so much more to do. Please, give as generously as you are able. For all we have received, and for all that we have found the courage to give, may we be truly thankful. Amen.
I was 13 years old when I became a Unitarian Universalist. I was raised in this faith, but I was 13 when I claimed it as my own. It was a Sunday afternoon, and I was waiting for my parents to finish their committee meetings after service. All the other kids had left and I was bored. I wandered into the visitor's corner and a little red wallet card caught my eye. It said in bold letters on the front, what do Unitarian Universalists believe? My 13 year old self wondered, what do Unitarian Universalists believe? As I read the 10 statements written by the Reverend David O'Rankin, in my heart, in my soul, as I read those words, I said, yes, this is what I believe. One phrase in particular planted itself in me like the deepest truth and I never forgot it. We believe in the motive force of love. It was in that moment when I knew that this was my religion. I start with this story to ground the work of you, you, the vote in our theology, which is its foundation and its inspiration. This year marks the 250th anniversary of what we celebrate as the beginning of universalism in the United States. It was on September 30th, 1770, that universalist John Murray preached his first sermon on this continent. And the truth that I read in that little red wallet card, the truth I've never forgotten, is the message of universalism. 250 years ago, in the context of religious notions of God rooted in punishment, damnation, and the division of humanity between worthy and unworthy, saved and damned, the idea of universal salvation, that God's love is unconditional, that no one is cast out, and that salvation is not individual but collective, was radical and liberating. Universalism proclaimed that humanity was bound together in a common destiny and that love, love is the thread that binds each of us to the other and everyone to creation. Universalists believe that God is love. They also believed in hell. They just believed that it existed here and now on the earth. The great universalist preacher Hosea Ballou was clear about how politicians and those in power used fear, stoked fear, to protect their greed and corruption and self-interest, and he knew the suffering that resulted from that. Rather than speak of theology in terms of speculative notions of God, Ballou spoke of it in terms of human experience here and now and our relationships to each other. A society that lives out the motive force of love would be one that fosters joy and liberation and thriving for all people. This is the highest calling of our faith as Unitarian Universalists, to live out, defend, and embrace this motive force of love in our lives, in our actions, in our commitments, and in our society. This is why you, you, the vote says vote love. Today, in our context, we are witnessing the emboldening and authorization of ideologies rooted not in love and interdependence, but in domination, authoritarianism, and dehumanization. And just to be clear, this is not new. It has a long and deadly history on this continent going back more than 400 years. And yes, even our universalist ancestors came from that same lineage of Christian European conquest and limited the vision of universalism only to white society, a limit that we are tr still trying to redeem ourselves from. It is dehumanization that creates systems that put children in cages, that deny health care to our transgender siblings, that allow police violence and the murder of black people to continue unabated and without accountability. 
dehumanization that allows triage protocols that devalue the lives of disabled people and that lead to systemic divestment from communities. The resources from housing to education, healthcare to jobs, and the criminalization of poverty. Just as Hosea Ballou named it, the tool of dehumanization, its propaganda is fear. Propaganda that tells us to fear our neighbor, that we are not family and kin, but enemies. This is the exact opposite of our theology of universalism that tells us that we have a common destiny and we are connected to one another in love. This is why you, you, the vote says vote, love, defeat, hate. And while the forces of dehumanization and domination have always been a part of U.S. history, so too have been those who have resisted and organized for the values of dignity, equity, humanity, and love. These days are heartbreaking, they're infuriating, and they're frightening. On days when I lose my own strength, I turn to the words of Alice Walker, who reminds us, we remember our ancestors because it is an easy thing to forget that we are not the first to suffer, rebel, fight, love, and die. The grace with which we embrace life in spite of the pain and the sorrow is always a measure of what has gone before us. We remember our ancestors, theological, familial, and in movement. We remember Francis, Ellen Watkins, Harper, Hosea Ballou, John Brown, Sitting Bull, Ida B. Wells, Dr. King, Anne Braden, and so many more whose names history does not remember. Those who struggled and risked and fought and loved for the principles of justice, equity, liberty. This is why in You, You, The Vote, we say vote love, we say defeat hate, because dear ones, we are on a precipice. Every single one of our most deeply held values is on the line right now. The current powers in government are showing in everything they do that the inherent worth and dignity of so many immigrants, black people, disabled folks, trans and queer people does not matter to them. Human agency, interdependence, the democratic process are being disrupted and defiled daily. It is a radical act of faith to not only continue to believe in all of our cherished principles, but to demand them by speaking out, taking risks, organizing, leveraging our resources and building networks of solidarity and power to protect one another and these values. We are on a precipice and our actions right now will affect whether we have a chance to continue to bring our bold values forward, to rebuild, expand, and strengthen our democracy, to confront police violence, to upend racial inequity, to change divestment from communities, and make moves to protect the climate. Now is the time to draw on the grace, the courage, and the strength of all those who went before, to widen our comfort zones, and to do all we can to vote love and defeat hate. If you haven't taken any form of action yet, sign up for a shift with You, You, The Vote. I can tell you that it's fun. And if you've written postcards to voters, but you feel nervous about phone banking, do it with your fellow UUs. And if you've been all in with you, you, the vote from the beginning, keep it up and start planning for how you will show up and organize after November 3rd. Because democracy will not be restored in one election. It's been under systemic attack for decades. And justice will not roll down like waters in one election. Voting matters. It's absolutely critical. But it is not the end. It is just one piece of the long haul work of organizing for a future where all are free and where all can thrive. Will you show up in the streets, set up to contribute to a bail or legal assistance fund, open your church building to protesters needing refuge from state repression, tap into your own endowment or discretionary funds to make sure that grassroots organizers have the funds they need for their work 
There is so much to do. And our faith calls us to love more radically, to give more generously, to believe more fervently that another world is possible and be willing to be all in for that future. As you've heard me say many times before, this is no time for a casual faith, no time for a casual commitment to what you hold most dear. And this is no time to go it alone. Friends, we are in this work together. I invite you to be deeper in this work of you, you, the vote with us. May we remember that we are held by love always. May we remember that we are held by and with one another. And may we all together be all in today, tomorrow, next month, and next year for justice, for love, for democracy, and for a future that is free and thriving for all people. May it be so. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these vines. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now. As we extinguish the chalice flame, which has danced through our time together, we commit ourselves again to keep the flame of justice burning bright, especially in those times and places where justice is denied with those people whose humanity is denied. 
and never will we extinguish the flame that burns in our communities, the flame of love, the flame that burns in our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our bodies, the flame that burns in our care for one another in our communities. Friends, I offer you these words from the Reverend Darcy Roke. There is too much hardship in this world to not find joy every day. There is too much injustice in this world to not right the balance every day. There is too much pain in this world to not heal every day. Each of us ministers to a weary world. Let us go forth now and do that which calls us to make this world more loving, more compassionate, and more filled with the grace of divine presence every day. Every day. Every day. Like it matters because it does. And thank you for tuning in to our UU Devote Sunday. So we are doing many things this morning, um, including honoring the Reverend Raina Hamry, who's been with us for about two years as she opens her heart to her new ministry and all the directions it will take her. And so as we're transitioning into coffee hour here, I invite you to um, stay tuned. We're going to have a little just honoring of Reverend Raina. Um, and you'll also have a chance to just chat with her and share a little bit about your appreciation for her ministry here. We're gonna start that um, with a, a little song that Francisco is gonna offer her spontaneously. So Michael Lyde and Tracy, if you're out there, could you please spotlight Francisco once again? And he's gonna offer a little song and then we'll do a little slideshow for Reverend Raina and she'll come on and receive your appreciations. So if we could spotlight now, going over to Francisco, great.
you. So if we could come back to the spotlight here, I'm actually gonna trade places with Reverend Raina herself, and then we can run that beautiful slideshow for her and she can receive your appreciations. Hello, everyone, and thank you for this morning. Um, I look around at all the preparations for the farewell, uh, the lovely song that Francisco sang, all your well wishes the last week or two, and I just have so much gratitude in my heart. So um, I'm looking forward to the, the video with some uh, photographs, and I'd like to leave you just with two messages. Please wear your name tags. <laughs> As a favor to me, as my, my very best going away present, please wear your name tags. And also, I'm going to uh, just quote the words from a, a second hymn, um, Welcome, Rejoice, and Come In. One of the, one of the stanzas says, uh, don't be afraid of some change. And when we come back together, all of us as Unitarian Universalists, our lives, our churches, our congregations may look very different. So don't be afraid of some change. I think there will be new things that are birthed from this change that will be just awesome. And thank you all for all the well wishes, all the help you gave me to become your membership coordinator and the new minister. So may you be well and whole. Thank you so much. I know Naomi, our DRE, and Leslie Coons put this together. Um, thank you all for those wonderful, wonderful memories. Again, be well and be happy. Blessings.